Dr. Titiyar, who is the head of this uh, eye department in uh, the very renowned institute, it's called this uh, AIMS. It's a very renowned one because it was established long back. So we just like to know this thing that uh, there's a problem is then the donation uh, in terms of uh, the people, those who are, I mean, after die, they donate uh, their eyes, but they face so many problems. Uh, I mean, they could not get those things after that. Yes, you are right. Uh, there is a definite uh, challenge on uh, retrieval of a cornea, which is uh, donated by uh, families after death of their next of kin. And it is mainly because we don't have the proper education of a society that donation is possible. We know that cornea can be taken out after within six to eight hours of death of a person. So that gives a window period for uh, counseling the family and arranging the uh, donation from the various uh, eye banking system. Most importantly, it is important to have uh, some sort of a regulation from the government regarding the accessibility of a uh, coronal donation team from the various institutions and guiding the administration for uh, informing the death of a particular person to the right department and maybe in future we can have a law which can give uh, some sort of a, a guidance to the uh, family that uh, somebody who has pledged for donation in their lifetime should have access to be given to the, uh, the staff or a doctors to take out that tissue which is at present not possible because uh, after death of a person his place has no meaning because the body belongs to the family and family has to decide if they want to do the donation. So that is one barrier we are facing. And second is counseling is also very difficult because it is a time where the entire family is at grief and to talk about donation at that time becomes very difficult. So we have a grief counselors who have been trained, but they are not available across the country. So that training has to be also done by us so that we have more people who can do a grief counseling and there should be also trained technician to take out the tissue at that time. And apart from that, we have to build the infrastructure of eye banking system in the country and improve the training of a surgeons so that they can perform those number of surgeries which are required for a country at that particular time. So these are three or four things which has to be improved by the government or non-government organization to fulfill the requirement of a grafting across the community. One more thing is there. This, uh, see this thing that uh, we, I mean, people are so lucky in this uh, because we have so many institutes in India. But uh, mainly we are talking about uh, the African countries and the countries which is, I mean, rotten there in so many places. They do not have these kind of things. So the country, some of the countries are like uh, Korea and other countries, they have the system that was, when he, any person dies there in the hospital, without any permission, they take out some of the, what you call that, uh, the kidney and the liver and whatever is the useful, uh, useful part is there. So do we have this kind of thing in India and we can go for that? You're absolutely correct. There are some countries, some states where uh, there's a law after death, the body belongs to the, the organization or the government and you can take out the all possible tissues can be uh, donated and transplanted to the other uh, required person. But in India, we don't have that type of guidelines where we can take out the yeah. organ or tissue without the consent of the family. So that is one uh, important thing which we have to look into, look into the demand is so much, people are suffering from various disorders. Second important thing you rightly said, there are various countries where they don't have access to uh, tissues or organs because uh, they don't have an uh, infrastructure. So we do have the, uh, you can say, a distribution system across India and there are various countries where they donate or uh, tissues to the other countries also. For that also we need to have a regulation where the country regulation provides us to send the tissue organ to that particular country. In those places where infrastructure is deficient in terms of training of a transplant surgeons, there also we have to assess those areas by providing the manpower who are trained in this aspect and improve the, the local infrastructure for a future development also. So there are threefold uh, resources needed for uh, those countries where 
things are not well placed in terms of transplantation, not only the corneal transplantation, other transplantation also. So we need to work for improving their infrastructure, then training the local manpower so that they can sustain that area and distribution of a tissue organ from other countries where they have excess tissue so that entire mankind is you know, suffering can be taken away from a proper distribution of the skilled manpower, the excess tissue and prevent the disease happening in those cases. I think the prevention or a prophylaxis has to be the prime aim for us so that in future we decrease the people's suffering from those disorders which may require transplantation. I am following Dr. Titi for the long, I mean for a very short time, this is like a six month or maybe eight months. I have seen this thing that uh, no religion I have seen in his uh, post, in his uh, status and everything. He wishes to the Christmas, he wishes to the, the, the Sharas which is celebrated here in, in India and Eid also. So the, the, the motive of uh, the, the doctors, those who are medically fit for all these things, they have only one motto is to give the, the practice to the others. And I am very thankful for this institute and thankful to you also that you have given us a lot of time for this Asian news and hope that we will learn so many things from you also in coming days also. And definitely, and definitely Robinson, uh, John, whatever association we have, uh, a physician or medical person and the uh, media, they both have a responsibility to spread the right information to the society so that they come out they come forward for uh, giving donations, not only financially, for uh, organs, tissues, because we have many, many people who are suffering from a disease which can be taken care of by a simple donation. And uh, donation gives you a, a good reputation, not for, for that family, for that person, to the entire society and country also. I wish that everybody should donate. Thank you. Eye donation provides the opportunity for doing a keratoplasty that is corneal grafting to a patient who are suffering from a blindness mainly because of uh, opacity happening into the cornea that is the anterior part of the eye which can only, only be corrected by doing a transplant after donation by a person who had pledged for a donation in their lifetime or the families of uh, next of kin can give a donation to the eye bank, hospital or a transplant centers. This is a, a moral duty of a community or society to donate something which can give the vision back to the person who is suffering from blindness. Huh. The process of eye donation is very, very simple. The, the hospital, the eye bank has to arrange for a taking the tissue from the deceased body or a person after family gives the consent. The team of uh, eye counselors and technician will visit the family or a hospital where the body is there. We just take out the cap that is a cornea. We don't harm the body structure or a face appearance of a person because we, after we take the corneal tissue, we put a nice contact lens which gives a very beautiful appearance or similar appearance of a face of a person. So that has given a, a good acceptance from the society that there is no disfigurement of a body or a face. After we receive the tissue in the eye bank, it is processed. We rule out the, all the infectious part which can get transmitted to the person who gets the tissue for a transplantation like disease like HIV. Eye banks are the actual infrastructure which is available in the various setups which may be a, a government setup or a private setup run by NGOs. They are the main source to connect the various uh, areas where donations are being done through collection centers or they are, have a responsibility to distribute the eyes which are collected by these eye banks to various transplant centers. So we appreciate the eye banking system to take care of the proper distribution, processing of tissue, and actually having the data of people who are blind because of cornea. So that uh, they has a, there has to be a uniform distribution system of cornea because there is always a difference between demand and supply. 
we have more people requiring cornea transplant surgeries and there are less number of tissue being donated across the world. As I said, uh, donation is a, a good uh, respect to the society in terms of removing blindness from the you know, corneal donation. We pledge for a donation, but when a person dies, he is no longer there to justify his uh, pledge. The family has a responsibility because they are sole responsible for the body and they can give the you know, consent for a donation of a tissue or organ. So whenever somebody donates, whenever somebody pledges for donation, they have to make aware their family, the society, friends that his desire should be fulfilled after his death or her death. So that is a very important aspect. We need a regulation where if somebody has pledged for a tissue donation, organ donation, that should give access to the hospitals or the transplant centers to take away the tissue or organ for a subsequent use.